Welcome to my channel, You Too Can Be Great. This is Love and Hip Hop Season 10. Recap slash review the trailer. I'm gonna tell y'all what I think is about to happen since I saw the super trailer and we're about to watch it. I think the first episode is tomorrow. I'm not sure, or maybe it's Wednesday. I don't know, but we're gonna figure it out. But this is what the trailer lets us know. And I'm gonna let you know what I predict is gonna happen and what the storyline is gonna be based on what I saw. We got Chrissy and Jim Jones coming back. Yeah. They're coming back. I love me some Jim Jones. That man is fine and he's entertaining. And I did really couldn't tell if they were still together. I think they are because they've been, they said something about living in the same house this whole, for 14 some odd years. But I never know. It's like Chrissy's been waiting to marry this man for generations. They didn't have kids. They don't have any kids. They've been together. I mean, damn. It doesn't, I don't know what's going on with them. But her and Jim are, are there. Um, they have this issue where their storyline is going to be that Jim hasn't been paying the bills on the property or paying the bills in the house and he didn't let her know. So they had a foreclosure in their house where their house was like sold for nothing. And she's like, I'm not irresponsible. I've been in this house for this long. Why would he do something like this? In addition to not marrying me and me not having a child, now we don't have a house, bitch. So she's not having it. She's not happy. And she's had to tolerate all this behavior that he's exhibited in the past, including with his mama. Why are you putting her through this? Then we got the situation where she did be she beat up Kimbella. Now y'all remember the storyline. Kimbella came, still look pretty. She came on the show with Yandy, and she was with uh, Jewels at that point too. Emily B was not being claimed by Fab at all. He's fucking around all these people. She finally made the decision that she was going to try to do this by herself and leave him because he wasn't treating her with respect or the way that she feels like she should be treated. Then in her party where she was announcing her new growth and trying to move on, they're still together. Then Kimbella decides to disclose to her in front of everybody, embarrassing her ass, that she dated her man, Fab, while she was pregnant with their kid. And she did it in this kind of setting that kind of humiliated her when she's supposed to be getting happy and, you know, kind of helping herself move on. That is not a good setting for you to deliver that news, Heffa. So Chrissy went and delivered those punches to her face. So now that they're back, Kimbella's already assumed a new persona. They're going to go ahead and discuss this, and that's going to be a topic of conversation between Chrissy and Kimbella. In addition to that, Chrissy does not have it. He does not feel it for Yandy. Y'all remember that Chrissy has a pattern with Jim Jones where if she does not like the person, she will find a way to fuck up their money with Jim because Jim is her man, and Jim listens to anything that she has to say. Yandy stood up in the club and danced to Mama Jones. I'm a psychotic bitch, 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 bitch you know, in the club. She danced to it. And she did it no, in front of Chrissy at a club. And Chrissy took offense to it because she knows that that was a diss track against her when her and Mama Jones weren't going along. When getting along, if you're down for Chrissy, why would you get up and dance to that song? But Yandy is their manager and she's not obligated to be Chrissy's little lap dog. And, and not, if she wants to dance to a song, she's going to dance to a song. But Chrissy took it personally, went off on her, and fucked up her relationship with her and Jim. And they haven't dealt with, with each other ever since. So their storyline will be that she's not going to try to check Yandy again. Yandy's all about that life now, apparently. So she's going to go and try to defend herself. So that storyline will also be present, especially now that Yandy and Kimbella are not on best terms either. Because Kimbella kept talking about her and her decision to be a foster parent, saying that Yandy is fake as hell and basically said that Yandy does stuff for clout, that she's not a genuine individual. Riley also accused Yandy of not being a genuine individual, saying that she's fake as hell. Mendeecee's baby mama said the same thing about her, so there might be some truth to it. But the point is Kimbella and Yandy are on the outs and maybe Christy is going to align herself with Kimbella and they can both tag team Yandy. We'll see about that. Then we got Yandy and Jonathan and Juju. My boo Juju and her fine self are back. The storyline is Mendici might be getting released. He might be getting a release date. So Yandy will finally get to be with her man. Hopefully he doesn't do nothing to go back or break his parole. The issue is she has a foster kid in her house and she had to get approved by the state to even be a foster parent. Would they be okay with somebody who has been in the pen and has a felony living in the same house? Of course, Mendeecee's mama cracks me up. She's going to be like, so is he, you expecting him to stay somewhere else? Like, why don't you kick out the foster girl instead? You don't have my, my baby staying somewhere else. But Yandy's looking at her like, Come on now, why would you even say that? But that's gonna be part of the storyline. And of course, we got the same beef I just explained. Jonathan's gonna be there for a support system as usual because Anais won't be there. You know, she's not gonna be there. Juju's also there as a support system. Juju may have beef with Erica Mena because y'all remember the Safari was trying to get with Juju for some time. And when Juju didn't want her, he kind of just tossed her to the side. And Juju explained that Safari is not a real good friend last season when Joe Button and Sim were there, that he's not a good friend, that he kind of just abandoned her because now he got a new boo. So Juju might also be there to address that. Her and Erica might actually have something going on, but we don't know. We'll see about that. Erica Mena and Safari are back. 
prego. Eric Mena is pregnant. She's having Safari's little girl. And they're engaged. They may actually show their wedding. I think they showed their wedding in the commercial. I'm not sure if it was a wedding or if it was an engagement party. I'm not sure. But they were dancing. They're expecting a girl. They're having fun. Apparently, Safari went to Jamaica and proposed to people. Now, here's the thing about Jamaicans. I know for a fact that Jamaicans do not value marriage. My aunt lives in Jamaica with her with my little nephew and they don't value marriage. In fact, they a lot of them will have like 10 kids by 10 different baby moms and it's normal for that to happen. And these kids are being born at age 14, 15. She told me a story where it was where the grandmama was pissed off that her daughter at 20 didn't have one child at all and she felt like people won't want her because there's something wrong with her. Why doesn't she have a baby? Like that was a huge thought process. Like the ass backwards thinking, like having kids and not being married is like the norm there. So for this whole thing with Safari going to Jamaica to propose to somebody, I don't know if Safari is like that too, being that he's Jamaican and he grew up in, I don't, I don't know if he has that same mentality, but he's marrying her. Maybe Erica made a push for the marriage. I mean, she was engaged to Bow Wow at some point, so I don't even know, but that's an issue going on. Then Tahiri mentions to Erica, because Tahiri's coming back, y'all. I'm going to get to her in a second. She mentions to Erica why is it she's not going to get a prenup with Safari, being that she's having a baby. It makes sense to protect yourself, you know, and not just go into this because y'all are on TV. And Safari has had drama with women too. Erica has had drama with men. This marriage has the potential not to work. So it's better for you to have a prenup to secure your bag and secure yourself and be comfortable being that you're getting into this type of matrimony. We also know that Safari is also having issues with Erica and he may be second guessing himself to marry her because of some of the stuff that he's seeing and he's going off on camera. Now we got Rich Dallas and his new artist Janice or Janice C. I, I couldn't tell what it was saying. But Rich is possibly fucking his artist. We don't know. He could be having a storyline where he's screwing her. It wouldn't be the first. So and Nia Lee mentioned that the Rich is known for screwing his damn artist. Erica Mena, a couple other people, Johnny Blaze. He screws his artist. So he might be screwing this person. But she's out here making music. And of course, Rich is still on Mena's dick because he keeps saying that he made Erica Mena. I don't think he made Erica Mena. When Erica Mena came on Love and Hip Hop for the first season, she was not fucking with Rich. She was not screwing Rich. She came and she attacked Kimbella because she said Kimbella was fucking up her money by screwing all these video people that she would end up on videos with. From She, she wouldn't get paid because they're expecting her to have sex with them. So she attacked Kimbella. She was cool with Yandy. She had her own storyline and she brought herself to this because she's also, also modeling. She was trying to sing before she started fucking with Rich. And her personality is charismatic. So Rich, I don't think your ass made her. I think your ass was sprung off of her and she chose a woman above you. And you felt some type of way, but you treated her like shit when she was with you. You played her like you were on TV trying to be this, you know, creep squad and you look dumb as hell. But now he's saying that he made Erica Mena because he's being salty. He tried to do this whole thing where he attacked Safari in the reunion when we know damn well safari don't fight so you pick out of everybody why don't you attack cisco when he was on the show why didn't you attack peter instead you want to attract the one person that's not gonna fight your back why don't you attack ray j when you were on love and hip-hop hollywood and you were dating Moniz, boy bye but he still got erica's mena's name in his mouth even though she doesn't want anything to do with him and safari and i'm gonna so that's gonna be part of his storyline too then we got sin back as well with joe and tahiri Sin, I feel like Sin and Rich are going to have this united front situation going on because in the trailer, they showed Erica Mena trying to hook up Tahiri and Joe. You're both single. You might as well. And we all want to Joe and Tahiri end up together. Tahiri is beautiful. She's one of the most beautiful individuals I've ever seen in my entire life. She's just naturally that way. She has a temper on her. Yes, but I still think the woman is beautiful. I think Sin is beautiful too. I do. But because Joe and Sin aren't together no more, they since broke up. They were engaged. They had a son. They since broke up. Erica, Erica, which I think she's being messy, but she did say, y'all are single. Why don't y'all get together knowing that Joe is a hoe? He's probably one that he wants to fuck to hear you every time he sees her. She got a nice ass. But I do feel like Rich Dollars and Sin are going to be have a united front because they both do not are not feeling it for Erica because Sin finds out that Erica Meadow was trying to hook up to Hiri and Joe and she says my ex is trying to hook up my is hook up my ex with his ex and that's just some, not something she has energy for because clearly she still has feelings for Joe who we find out that Joe and her broke up because Joe cheated on her which Tahiri has 
years of experience dealing with Joe cheating on her. The season, the last season that she was on there, she was trying to make it work with Joe. And Joe decided to have a bitch on their bed. And when she walked in, she pulled out this long hair talking about whose hair is this? This ain't mine. I left, you got a bitch in our bed where we're supposed to be sleeping when you can tell, take her ass to the couch. You can take her to the living room, to the general area where she's supposed to be not in our bed. And he was acting like there was nothing wrong with it. So she was like, you're disrespectful as hell. You don't have any respect for me. It doesn't matter what I do. You don't respect me. Boy, bye. So, of course, Joe cheated on saying he's doing what he always does. His narcissistic ass is lying about it. No, I didn't. And, of course, the sin is like, you can at least respect me enough to tell me the truth when I'm asking you about it to help me get some, you know, peace of mind. Yes, I'll probably be angry about it, but at least I know the truth and I'm not losing my mind. Joe is the type of person that you, he could, you could catch his hand inside the pot stealing the cookie. And he'll have the cookie in his hand and be like... I'm not stealing the cookie. I don't know what you're talking about. I didn't see a cookie. I think that you're hallucinating. In fact, you might have some issues. You might go see a psychiatrist because I don't see what you're talking about. I didn't have my hand in the cookie jar. What are you talking about? And you'd be looking at him like, I just saw your hand in the cookie jar. You're making me seem like I'm crazy. That's the type of person he is. So Sin is having a problem. And she probably broke up with him because of that. Also, Sin is significantly young than, younger than Joe. So he's feeling like he's probably go out there and find somebody else. Either Sin reminds me of Tahira a little bit. I feel like he has a type. He likes Hispanic women. He likes them the way that they are. They're extremely curvy, got a big ass. I mean, they're very, very, their shape is prominent. And Sin has that shape. Tahiri has that shape, except Tahiri's ass is just not comparable to any ass I've seen. So I think that he's going to go find him somebody else and do the same shit because Joe is just Joe. Then we got Papoose and Remy Mom, my loves. They're both here, and to me, they are the couple that, the power couple of the Love and Hip Hop franchise. Papoose and Remy Ma are the power couple of the Love and Hip Hop franchise. Every season I see those two, they are ride or die. He supported her when she was in jail. He had her back from the beginning. She came out of jail, and she just hit the, she hit the ground running. She got all these music out. She's working hard. She had a kid. She got married. I mean, she's getting older, yes, but she's not trying to be running around working hard and struggling like these new artists are doing. She wants to have something set because she's earned it. She's a legend. She's put her mark, left her mark as a musician on this earth. So has Papoose. So her storyline with him is that they're struggling, trying to manage everything and her to put her music out without having to go out there and behave like some of the new artists that we see, like Cardi B and stuff like that, do all that ratchet craziness. She doesn't want to do all that. She says she's not in that mindset no more. She has a kid. She's a mother. She has this whole family dynamic going on. So... I want to see how they're going to play out. We got a new rapper. I think his name was Fresh. And he's old lady, Jim. And it seems like the new rapper story is a typical storyline that we're going to have where you are a rapper and you think that the rapper lifestyle, that what comes with it is for you to be a cheater in your relationship. And we got the woman who's always dumb enough to stay with that man and hold him down when he's struggling, even though while he's struggling, he's cheating on your ass because he doesn't appreciate you and what you're doing and how you're sporting his grind, being disrespectful. And they cheat on you when they end up getting money, making money and put themselves out there, they'll leave your ass for somebody else because all these hoes come flucking when you start making money. So we got Fresh and Jen. And there's a girl who Fresh has been fucking, who Jen is trying to fight, trying to fight. Why are you fighting the girl? Why? What has she got to do? She has, she holds a responsibility for screwing your man, yes, but she is not the one who swore or who made, whose word you should take accountability for. And Fresh is out there went with tears talking about, you're going to give everything that you deserve because you held me down. It is not a woman's job to hold you down when you are struggling and for you to turn around and betray her trust by fucking somebody else. At least have the respect and honor to respect somebody who stood by you when you didn't have nothing. But here's the storyline that's gonna come out it's gonna irritate me, I can already tell. Cause I don't respect people like that. I don't respect people like that think it's okay to go and abuse somebody's love for you. If the girl's been with you the whole time, your lady that's kept you down, do you think that it's right for you to do what you did to her and then store in front of her face and cry and like your tears don't mean shit. You're going to cry tears of gold so I can use it to get them all the money back I spent on your ass? Like, no, nah, I don't like that storyline, but that's what's going to happen with Fresh and Jen. Because she's there with her New Yorkan accent talking about she'll kill this girl. Anyway... Kim Bella has her own private storyline with Jewels because Jewels is locked up. Y'all know she had a baby. She married him right before he went into the pen, probably so they can have conjugal visits. But she married him. And since then, we already heard that their house is under foreclosure as well. They're not able to keep it up because Jewels is not here to even front the bill or work or anything like that. Kim Bella has to manage the lifestyle and support his prison habit and give him money so he can get all the commissaries and all the bonbons and all the Roman noodles, Roman noodles, like Tierra said, Raymond noodles. Anyway, 
she's going through it and she misses her boo now that she has to play you know, the house mom the housewife and the provider and everything i don't think that these men realize the depth that, of what they put us women through when they go behind bars when we're supposed to be married when dc did it to yandy they're married he's in prison now and she's playing mom to all the kids and he has other kids by two other women without a father you got Joelle's going through the same thing scrap did the same thing it's like y'all are saying oh we need to make that money we need to make that money but you're not considering the repercussions of your actions y'all have a family kimbella was pregnant when Joelle's went in he has a child that's gonna be born that's not gonna go know him that well until he comes out like come on now and we women are stuck trying to you know be right or die for men that don't really deserve for us to be right or die because you didn't think about your family when you chose to do what you did i already told my man i'm not built for this life i'm not built to be a prison wife i'm not built to be any of that no ma'am if you go to prison because you didn't think about me or how i would feel sleeping alone at night by myself i will be i'll have your back because i don't feel like it's okay for a guy to go in there and not really you know just suffer like that because i know how the system works against us in its entirety however i will be living my best life i will move on with the person who is out here that can actually spend time with me and my family and be present the whole time so if you go out there and make a decision because you're so desperate you don't want to have patience and do things the hard way be prepared for every consequence that comes along with and that includes losing all of this <sighs> yes <laughs> okay guys uh thank you so much for listening hopefully this new season is coming out it looks like it's gonna be a lot better than what we've been going through with hollywood i think the entire franchise needs a whole makeover in its entirety but I like that they're bringing some of the old faces that we know because when Chrissy was on there, I was entertained. When Jones was on there, I was entertained. When Mama Jones was there, I was entertained. Safari there entertains me. Erica Mane entertains me. Rich Dollars and his creep ass entertains me. So I hope that with all these cast members that we're already familiar with, this season is worth something and don't waste all of my time and energy and efforts. Okay? I love y'all. Look for The Real Housewives atlanta review i will be doing it and as long and as well as the love and hip-hop reading to hollywood um review and recap okay because they left us in a good good section i'm ready to see what happens after that all right love y'all have a good evening